phone call and said, hey, can you meet us down toward Harrisburg? We're going to be such and such a place. Can you come down here? We got some stuff we want to show you. And I had no idea what they were going to show me, but so I got there and they got pictures, big blow ups of, of the insides of honeybees and bees that we had taken. And they didn't find the virus that they were looking for, but what they found was, and if you go on some of the websites about CCD, you'll see the insides of these honeybees, and the inside of a honeybee is kind of a nice creamy color when it's, when it's healthy. Well, these honeybees were actually, their, their internal parts were crystallized, their, stinger, their sting glands were crystallized, and all kinds of weird, you know, just weird things. So, we started to basically, or they started to work on this, and uh, as the winter went on, or into, into December, and so on and so forth, you know, we, we had all kinds of ideas, looked at all kinds of things, but nobody had any idea what they were looking at. And, and so we looked at viruses, and they were looking at pathogens, and they are looking at the mites, and so on and so forth. The apiary inspector from Florida, chief apiary inspector from Florida, Jerry Hayes, who spent a lot of years in industry before he went and took that job, called me on the phone one day and he said, so what's going on in France? What was going on over in France? I, said, I don't know. I really didn't care. And he said, well, you know, they lost a lot of bees. I said, yeah. I said, they called that their, uh, what did they call it? Some kind of something. I don't know what it was, but I said, he goes, well, you know a lot of people. He says, Call somebody over and find out. Well, I did call a guy, but I, I couldn't already understand him. <laughs> and, uh, he kept saying about pesticides, you know, something about maize and, and pesticides. I could get the maize part, that's corn. <laughs> and uh, so this is mid December, you know, and like, well, it was kind of interesting. So I started to, you know, I'm, like I said, I grew up in farming. I own, actually own two farms. And so I called my buddy up at farms for me, and I said to him, I said, so what are we, you know, we changed pesticides here a couple years ago. What are we, what are we doing now? I said, what, you know, and, you know, a typical farmer, he don't know what he's doing. All he knows is the guy's telling him what to do, and he does it. <laughs> and uh, so I called his kid out, who's a little smarter than Bill, Bill and my age. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I called Luke up, and I said, Luke, I said, so what do you always oh, said we got we got a new deal now. He said we got you know, we got this seed treated stuff, he said, you know, it come out with I ain't using a lot of it. He said, I'm using some and he said, We got you know, we got Puncho going on the corn, and Cruiser going on the soybeans. Oh, okay. So I said, When did that all that all started about two thousand four or five, didn't it? Yep, 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 yep. So then I started to look about, I tried to get a hold of my apple grower in New York. It wasn't actually my apple grower. It was a guy I sent to, another beekeeper I sent some bees to up there. So I called the grower. I knew the grower, and I called him on the phone. He didn't know anything either. He said, uh, you have to talk to my chemical guy, because they applied something. I don't know what they applied. And uh, so I got him on the phone. He didn't want to talk to me. And so I jumped in my pickup truck, and I drove up to New York. And uh, walked in his office, told him who I was, what I wanted to know, and so he told me, "Well, we used some new experimental drug or chemical called a sail." So, okay, so I turned around, drove another 150 miles back home. In the meantime, I, I started to look at so what's so what is poncho and what's what is all this stuff, you know? And, oh, it's nicotinoids. It's uh, the metacorpus scopiodin, you know, and there's, when you get into the metacorpus and, and the nicotinoids, there's five different classes of them. And they all have nice names like a sale and Provado and a mire and they use on your lawns and a sale or a, well, the list goes on. He just goes on and on and 120 some of them and they all got nice names. <laughs> I started to basically didn't know much about a computer at that point, and so I go work bees during the day and try to figure out what's going on. And I tell my wife what to look at. And by the time I got home that night, she'd have stacks of paper for me to look at. And as I read through this stuff, it kept getting more interesting. And the, one of the studies that she stumbled onto early on was a study done by the University of Florida in Florida on sub-Mediterranean termites for the metacorpus in 
that Bayer paid for to have Florida run this study on, on thermals. Oh, back up one other thing. Before, one of the things you also we've seen going on, we feed bees in the fall of the year to get their, their, their weight up and feed them sugar syrup. And, and bees won't eat. And this is weird. I mean, you put the feed out there for them and they won't eat. You put the feed in your hive and they still won't eat. So, as I looked at this study, then I remember the night I came home from Florida from working bees in early January, and here's a study that's talking about stone red methane termites and how this chemical stops. It doesn't kill them. It said right in the article, it doesn't kill them. It basically breaks down their immune system, stops the insect from eating, uh, causes them memory loss, so they can't find their way home. Wow. Pretty neat. That's exactly what's going on in these beings. So, I made some phone calls, and now, you know, I think that stuff's safe. It ain't, it's the safest thing out. You know, the old organic phosphates and all the old, the old paint gap them and all that stuff, you know. This stuff's a lot safer, it ain't hurting mammals, and the chemical companies say it's not going to hurt. And, you know, it's not going to kill the bees. They've done studies, with lots of studies, you know, it shows it doesn't hurt bees. Anyhow, we started looking around and started doing some of our own investigating and, and called some other folks in Penn State. Fortunately, we have some people at Penn State that aren't worried about the chemical companies. On, on, on like most of the land-grant universities in the country, and even Penn State, the chemical companies, uh, crop life to if you don't know who crop life is, they, they put out nice, lots of nice literature, but unfortunately crop life is the coalition of 60-some chemical companies. And crop life is their educational arm to convince you and everybody else out here that they're a bunch of safe folks. But anyhow, we started, all these universities are getting money from, from these chemical companies, and so most of them are reluctant to even tackle the pesticide. They'll look at the pathogens, they'll look at the viruses, they'll look at the mites, but when it comes to looking at pesticides, now nah, that's not, not some place where you go. Even the USDA, Jeff Pettitz, who is the chief scientist for the USDA, was told by his superiors, you can look at mites, you can look at viruses, and you can look at all this stuff, but you can spend 3% of your time looking at pesticides. Well, as a couple of years rolled on and things kept falling into place, and Penn State started doing more work and started looking around. And of course, after, by, by February of that year, I mean, this was kind of low key in, in December and December and January. Nobody, nobody in the outside world knew that anybody was even doing anything. And like I told you before, I got a son in Philadelphia. About the second or third of, of February, my son in Philadelphia calls me up and says, Hey, Dad. You're on the front page of the Philadelphia Inquirer this morning. <laughs> I said, I am? He goes, well, they're talking about you. I said, what are they saying? He said, they have said you discovered some new disease that nobody knows what it is. I said, really? I said, who, who said that? I said, well, this guy wrote this article. He said, he talked to somebody at Penn State, and they said, you, you know, you're... That was about 8 o'clock in the morning. I burn up two cell phones since then. <laughs> Literally. Uh, two days later, a friend of mine tells me I was in 480 newspapers around the world. That I was supposed to, you know, whatever I did. And since that time, there's been three or four books written. There's been two or three movies made. And as Jay said, this one here called Nicotine Bees. You can get that one on Amazon for 15 bucks. <laughs> There's been children's books. I got back to Pennsylvania last night and walked in the office, and there's two gals out of Connecticut that have wrote a, a book for children's school libraries that I opened up and looked at this morning before I flew out here, and it's a really neat book. I forget what the title of it is, but I mean, there's just lots and lots of stuff that's been 
I've been on Good Morning America.